Welcome. This is the Jenkins User Experience Special Interest Group. Today is September the 11th, 2024. Topics we've got include Jenkins releases, brief notes, recent UI topics, DevOps World Virtual, uh, Jenkins Dashboard Survey, and summary of what's upcoming in the next LTS baseline, and then the accessibility report. Uh, any other topics that you want to be sure we add to the agenda? Okay, then I'm going to go ahead. All right, so special thanks to Basil Crow, to Brun, to um, Adrienne Le Charpentier, and to a number of others. We've got Spring Security 6, Jetty 12 EE9 in Jenkins Weekly 2.475 and in the one released yesterday, 2.476. Thank you, thank you. And it's passing acceptance test harness and it's passing plug-in bill of materials. We also, that same day as 4.75, we released 2.462, the second of the LTS series that will end support for Java 11. 2nd of October, we'll release the final version to support Java 11. And next week, we choose the next LTS baseline. Any questions on those items? OK, then let's get to the important stuff. So recent UI topics. And I'm open to conversations about which ones you want first. This first one, Thor, I think you were, you were leading it. Is there something you'd like to share on that? Oh, oops, Thor has dropped off. Okay, we lost Thor. No, no, it's like, I, oh. I, I'm here. So <laughs> I just didn't find my unmute button. Sorry about that. Okay. Uh, basically, uh, the, the, the question right now is like, uh, there, there is a, a small issue with this um, topic. Basically, there is a horizontal scroll on Firefox. There is a PR open. Uh, John actually had... Uh, had a look on it. So basically, I'm not sure his um, where which his fix is actually meaning. So I, I reduced it a little bit the the wife and with uh, with that it actually should work fine, but it would need some more feedback, I guess. Okay, great. And Jan, anything that you wanted to share? Um. Yes. Yeah, so on. I think it's just an issue in Firefox, I believe. Um, there's um, like a, a pseudo element on the table and um, which applies like a border around the table. Um, and I think that's what's causing it to kind of overflow. Um, so I think if it's just happening in Firefox, just remove the border in Firefox. Um, it seems like it's a browser issue more than a as issue. So in that case, you'd use a media query to decide that we're on some, a check to see that we're on mm -hmm. Firefox? Yeah. Good. Thor, any questions from you? No, I will have a look. Great, thank you. Okay, next one that I had on my list was user account screen content and appearance. Uh, Jan, I think this one is one that you, you've been working on. Yep. Um, got, a, got a few kind of branches in the works um, just to kind of improve content across Jenkins. Um, so the idea is to kind of add descriptions for a field um, and also improve content that is there already. Um, I think for like this page, it's not greatly useful because um, like everyone knows what full name means, right? It means a full name. Um, but I think for screens like um, the kind of general Jenkins settings or configuring jobs, it could help with having kind of descriptions as to what the kind of controls do. So now what I see is it seems to have dropped the question mark, which was the expandable help. Is that mm -hmm. intentional or is, the, is yeah. the description text replace is it will be that help is always visible? Yeah. Um, for kind of short bits of help, if it's just like one or two lines, I think it makes more sense to keep that always visible and have the user have to click. So so if there's some, okay, some things in the Git plugin, for an example, I have mm -hmm. multiple paragraphs associated with, mm -hmm. with a particular help item. Would the question mark seems to be gone here? Would it be available to me as a plugin maintainer to keep the question mark or no, yeah. that's, it would be. 
yeah, yeah. It's it's just these fields on this page um, that I it's see. been removed for. Ah, okay. All right. So so the removal of the help was what is an intentional extra uh, intentional change by the page the page owner by the person who's creating the page. Yeah. Got yeah, it. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. All right. Questions from others on user account, screen content, and appearance? Okay, next one was the, uh, the command palette for search. And here I saw just a day or two ago that Daniel Beck had commented that now that Jakarta EE9 is in, he plans to do the review within, within the next little bit. So this one is in doing search from a palette rather than from the 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 bar at the top right did did yeah. i say that correctly on yeah no you're you're spot on um also kills off the one of the last yahoo yahoo ui items in jenkins as well which would be nice oh oh okay i'd miss that win very good okay removes another use of yahoo ui very good okay Anything else you wanted to note on that one or that others need to note? Um, and if anyone wants to take a look over it as well, just to kind of, you know, um, leave a review, that's, that's always appreciated. Um, but hopefully, hopefully we're near the end of it now. Good. Okay, thanks. The next one on the list was hiding the preview for the plain text markup format. And I thought this one is, was relatively little feedback on it. Um, so there was a comment, um, maybe a couple of comments, um, but I think it was basically just a misunderstanding by myself of how it works. So I'll need to go back and um, do a bit of research into, into how that. Ah, oh, okay. So this one, this one needs needs some more code change. Got it. All yeah. Right, thanks. Yeah, yeah. Okay, and then moving exec executors from the dashboard and nodes page to a dedicated page. I think this, oh, this one's still in draft. So Tim, I had included this in the list. Should it be dropped from the list? What's your guidance? I'd drop it from the list to probably close this for now. I think there's too many questions. It's more than just the simple ask that it was before. Ah, I see, okay, great. So drop from the list. It is a draft pull request. And so that, that makes sense that it just stays great. Thank you. The next one then was use standard dropdowns. And this one was dependent on another pull request that as far as I can tell has been merged. Did, did yeah. I get that correct? I had bad notes from the last time. I think this is the one that we needed. Use standard dropdowns for autocomplete. And so this one at least one barrier has been removed for it. Yeah, I think it just needs conflicts resolved and then see if we need to, if there's any code cleanup that's needed to simplify it. Okay, great. Great. Did I miss anything in, in topics? Let's bring up the web UI query. So here are the things that are on the web UI, that have the web UI label. There are 18 right now. Anything on this list that anyone would like to be sure we discuss further? Mm -hmm. Where's the keyboard shortcut tooltips at? This one right here. Yeah. Do you want me to open that? Mm -hmm. Okay. I, I think it might need another lock over by Daniel. Um, I've made the changes that he'd, he'd asked for. Just oh, go, Yeah, just go down to the bottom. I, I think it might have been something for you to look at if you just scroll to the lip. Oh, you've made changes. Okay. Okay, so 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 this one just needs... Uh, so should I just yeah. click the needs review? Dismiss yeah. the this one. If I click the request, re-request review, is that, that how I do it right? Yeah, just click it. Click it on my one as well, like I need to have another look at it. Okay, great. All right. Very good. Okay, so let's see. And let me put that into the notes here. That was keyboard shortcut. Uh, there we go. 
let's just grab the text. And the pull request is that one. Okay, thanks. All right, and so this one then needs additional review. Okay, good. All right. Back to the list of the 18, are there any others we should be sure we discuss here today? Oh, oops, 19, not 18. So this one, viewing GZ compressed archives was still an, I thought an open question about, do we really want it? Do we want to add this capability into core? I guess maybe that's not a UX SIG question. That's a bigger, bigger picture question. Yeah, I think I might have approved. I feel, just open it up. I feel like it may have been a very small change. Yeah, two. Yeah, it was like, it was five lines and there's no extension point. So I approved it in the end after it's been open for quite a while. Okay, and then the, yeah, the question then became. No one else has approved it. Right, no other approvals and it's just gone quiet, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, and okay, there's your comment. Slight plus one. So yeah, it could be detached, but no response. So it's got merge conflicts. And then the question is, do we want to continue with it? All right, so that one I'm going to include in the in the topic just in case support GZ viewing, content viewing, right? Because that's what it's doing. Good, all right. Anything, any others that were on that list that we should be, we should consider discussing. Okay, then I'm gonna I'm gonna call that part of our session done. So you recent UI topics. Any other recent UI topics that anyone needs to be sure we bring up before we go on to other topics on the agenda? Uh, so it's the the thing that I actually uh, provided a PR for, but then Basil actually gave content or feedback about uh, that is actually including some. So basically, my problem basically is without some major hack, I would call it, in the path, you can't actually reuse yarn uh, very easily for yeah doing fixes, yarn then fix or something like that. So uh, I actually wasn't aware that we actually as well have the core included. So uh, the second attempt to actually do uh, a better integration with yarn would be to actually to say like, all right, instead of having the um, NPM package or the package JSON in, war, in the war directory, uh, I just move it to the top, basically to the root uh, directory of Jenkins. And from there on, then include core, um, yeah, the core in the war uh, folder. But basically, the infrastructure would be only in, in the root because right now we have in the root, we have the definition of the um, prettier files and ESLint rules, right? And in, in the war, we actually have the NPM definition, right? Or like the POM um, for NPM, which is a little bit weird and leads to problems if you actually want to use it. Uh, a standalone and do not actually have like a hack in your pass uh, to actually use it. So is somebody aware why we haven't actually included into the root rather than put it in the war directory? So not to, you know, it's like <laughs> not meaning uh, creating an, another um, PR and, and then actually getting to know that that will not work out of uh, different reasons. So if somebody has some knowledge about this. So 
Tim or Jan, I I am I am not yarn experienced, so I'm the wrong person to answer. Any any insights to offer? Let's see, uh, Thor, what was that? The oh, oh. so the only reason it's there is just that's where it's always been because it's been part of the war project and it's easy to run as part of Maven like that. So Ma Maven runs the war project and the Maven front end plugin runs the, at that point. Um. There was a ESLint breaking change uh, where it changed how it looked up files. And so I think when Basil updated to that, that introduced some issues. And at that point, I think when the uh, ESLint files got moved up and pretty, it may have always been there or may not have been, I'm not sure. Um, but so that's why some files have moved up. And part, part of the complexity is that we use ESLint and Prettier across, or at least Prettier, um, if not ESLint, we use them across all projects, but it's in the sub project for war, which I think causes the problems. If we move it up, hopefully it'll fix it. So, yeah, 100% on board with trying to fix this. It's annoying. And Basil's work around in the contributing guide confused me um, and that it wasn't announced at all either. Um, but it's his workaround does work, but it's, it's not right, and you shouldn't have to do that in a yarn project. Does that make sense? Yeah, no, no, perfect. Uh, let me try that and, and, and try to move it up and, and, and see to come up with a yeah, better solution, basically. Yeah. But I completely agree. So it's a little bit strange to, to have this path uh, jump I around. Don't, I don't understand why it works either, because if I run yarn version, I'm getting the right version, so... Yeah, I, I don't. I don't understand why the workaround is there. Oh, so okay, like, I, I think actually the workaround actually only works because you're actually adding some not modules from from Jarn, which are actually mm -hmm. downloaded. But basically, the ASLIN configuration that's basically is was was failing normally, and with the pair uh, in the pair, if you have it in the path, and then it actually could be right. looked up. But okay. okay, that's why it works. It's a, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it took me a while as well, but yeah. I, I just like, this is actually my guess. It's not 100% sure, but yeah. I, I'd be pretty sure it's how it is. So it's literally picking up the yarn package into the path, which means that if you leave that in your path, you're f affecting other projects as well. Exactly, yeah, exactly, yeah. Okay, so, so I confess, I didn't understand all the details there, but Thor, did you understand? Are you comfortable with the details? Yeah, yes. Perfect. Cheers. Okay, great. Excellent. Thank you. Any other topics? Oh, and, and that PR was really, it's a, it's a series of PRs, right? It's not even just one. It's there have been a few different things there. Where'd it go? It's just one PR, I think. 9713. 9713. Oh, okay. Not. So I need to. It doesn't have it. as a label yet. Yeah. Got it right. So I'm going to add the uh, the label to it. I've, I've added it. Oh, Too okay. Slow. Thanks, Tim. Great. Okay, so I'll just put that in. Excellent. Thank you. All right. Any other topics on recent UI? Uh, Jan is the pull request title one in branch shape. In the, is it branch or a CMA, a CMA API? One of the. Um, I think it's branch. I'll um I'll ping it in the chat. Uh, doo -doo 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 -doo. So there's a branch API pull yeah, request. Yeah, if you just get a branch, if you get a branch API plugin. Okay, let's do it. And we need a bit of help on that. We're a bit stuck. <laughs> oh, okay. All right. So. Yeah, it's the draft one by Jan. This one here, show pull request title and name column. Yeah. So the codes work, but the tests are using a class rule. Um, and there's some, I don't know, something not getting cleaned up properly. If you run it as a rule, the tests work just fine. Unfortunately, there's 76 tests in that class, and you don't want to run those as a class, as a rule because it's going to add on 10 seconds per test rather than like one second. Right. Okay. Well, well, but 
but okay, if we have to run them as a rule, all right, it's putting a penalty. Okay, so fails tests when 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 run without a well, rule as a when run as a class rule. Oh, run. Ah, oh, I see. Uh, but pass when run as a rule. Yeah. A class rule, Jenkins rule. But pass when run as a rule, Jenkins rule. Uh, that's terrible, yeah, isn't it? Shame was, on me. Uh, yeah. I spent a couple of hours debugging it, and I haven't really got anywhere. I had a couple of comments from Jesse and James, but... Okay, so... But any help is much appreciated. <laughs> help is appreciated. And... Um, Worst case, yeah, we can we always just change it to a rule. Worst case, I guess, switch we to see. a rule and accept the performance penalty, right? Yeah, or okay, technique I've used in the past, and and do all of the tests fail in that class, or it's just one test? It's a lot of them, it's not all of them. There's about uh, there's a few tests that I'm um, that don't they don't all when I run them, my idea they don't all pass anyway, so I'm not uh -huh. sure exactly how many it is. I think some of them need to be run through Maven. If I run them through IntelliJ, a few of them don't pass properly. Got it. Okay. So because I know in, in the Git plugin, I've done these the dirty partitioning trick of, mm. I'll put these evil tests in their own class, and, and they do things the evil way, and the good people get into this other nice class. Okay. All right. Good. Okay. Anything else? Uh, did you want to show that in case... To did you show it last time, Jan, or, or just? Uh, I don't think so. Um, the idea is just to show the um, pull request title um, on the dashboard and inside of projects um, rather than like the kind of ID. Right. Um, Which... Bless you. <laughs> Bless you, my son. Thank you very, very much. <laughs> I, I hate, despise, and cannot describe how badly I, I ache for this improvement. So. <laughs> so if you can ache and nudge people. <laughs> right, exactly. <laughs> so my apologies, I didn't realize it was there because this is a personal hangup for Mark Waite, right? This is, this is really, truly, oh, I hate having to guess which PR number it is. Can I just see the text? Thank you. Okay. So, so, so yeah, that's so that's all working. It's using a, it's it's creating a default. It's creating a. It's using the traits API, and it's just defaulting it to, to use this trait if no other trait is specified. So there is already traits to do this. You can already configure it in your instance, but it's not done by default. Um, oh. and, and we also and we're also trying to improve the UI a bit as well. Um, I'm not sure if you've changed it in the trait, but um, but yeah, we are looking at trying to make it a bit nicer than what the trait currently displays. Good. All right. Excellent. All right. Thank you. So I didn't realize there was a trait. I would have enabled that trait long ago on my personal instance. And we found it during, well, so Jan changed it in the defaults. He changed the PR stuff in the default. But as we were looking into it in more detail, we, we found the trait. No, no one seemed to know it existed. I've never seen any instance configured with it. Right. But the, th the thing is, we shouldn't need it. It should be a sensible default. So we're trying right. to change the default. Good, very good. All right. Any other current UI topics? Okay. Next next topic then is DevOps World Virtual. So Tim and Jan are speaking. They'll do, they've got a 30-minute talk on the transformation of the Jenkins user interface and what's next. Tim, Jan, anything you want to give as highlights or teasers about what's in your talk? I don't know. Um, <laughs> blimey. Um, we, we go over a lot of the stuff that, that's been implemented um, and then give some quick previews of what's what's coming up. Um, it, it, it went all right. I think we, mm. we were quite happy afterwards. So. Yeah. I, th I think it, so it'll show a, a bunch of the cool things that have changed in the last couple of years. So if you want to see what things look like before and what look, they look like now and what's changed, uh, and yeah, and then we'll go into uh some of these and maybe a little bit of other stuff i'm not sure was there a little bit of other things uh, and just mm -hmm. some of the approaches and just some of the progress on some of the projects that have been ongoing like yahoo ui and that yarn's pull request is one of two remaining things in jenkins core so the 
Um, so the command palette, the, the only other thing in Jenkins core is a test. If, you, if you've ever debugged a Jenkins rule test, you see that 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 console on the left-hand side? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so that's the only other thing left. Yes. Okay, good. So, so and that's it. it's easy to rip out. Assuming so, that the tests don't rely on it. Right, we right. We haven't and, checked and, that yet. And if tests rely on it, we want to discover that by running acceptance test harness and running yeah. plugin bomb and good. Yeah. Very good. Okay. Excellent. Yeah, and some of the other things that have gone on to talk well, about and I assume, I assume projects. Did you did you talk about prototype JS removal? Again, mm -hmm. that's a yeah, so removal of prototype JS. Oh. And to find out about the other two projects, you have to come along and see. <laughs> All right. <laughs> So next next week, registration is free. Uh, join us. Uh, the Jenkins officers also have a presentation and a Q&A session. Uh, so, so Kevin will be there as one of the officers. Tim is one of the officers. Me as one of the officers. Or no, as a board member. Sorry, the rest, the others are officers. Anything else on DevOps World Virtual that you want to highlight? Okay, next topic then is the Jenkins dashboard survey. Jan, I'm sorry. We talked about this last month. I think I had some action items and I have totally failed to do them. Uh, I'm in the same boat, so. Oh, yeah, okay. So I'm not good. the only one who, are, are, <laughs> are we ready to send this to the, maybe maybe what we do is a DevOps world virtual announcement to the mailing list and invite them to respond to this form? Yeah, I think that'd be really good. Yeah. All right. So are you okay if I send that or do you want to be the one sending it? Um, no, more, more than fine. That's right. Okay. So DevOps world virtual announcement and invite uh, responses to the survey. And so everybody's seen it. This is what the survey looks like. It's not a huge survey asking which things are most crucial for you and which things are least on the dashboard table. Great. Uh, and I assume it's also okay to send it to the, to the developers list. Yeah. Um, however, really still good. Great. Excellent. Okay, I, next. I may have missed it, but did you say community.jingles.io as well? Oh, oh, thank you. No, I didn't say that, and I should have. Great. Thanks. Yes, very, very good. All right. Anything else on the survey? Okay, next topic. Oh, go ahead. No, okay. Next topic was just my reminder of things that are coming in the next LTS baseline because they're already merged to the, the master branch uh, and already been released in weekly. I haven't looked in the last few weeks. Are there other things I should be putting on this list that I need to be, be mindful of? And I'll do the research. No, no worry, I can check. Review pull requests. Great. Last topic, Christina. We we had had an item for you to extract yeah. from this accessibility report. Anything you want to report? Yeah, I mean, it was it was fairly vague in that I kind of decided it's just it's been been definitely over a year. I don't think it's been quite two years since we did our last kind of audit overview. I'm just going to do that myself and then create tickets. Okay. And then we that we're kind of at a good baseline for the next year. Great, thank you. Truthfully, though, I've had um, the last few weeks have been fairly packed, so I'm hoping to 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 make some time for this this month. Excellent. Any other topics we need to discuss today? All right. Thanks for attending. Recording will be available separately. I'm going to stop the recording now. And thanks very much. <laughs>